If you have large appliances that draw out of power that are plugged into like an outlet, EV chargers are a prime example, it's a good idea to check them just to make sure that you don't have excessive heat building up. Now I check mine from time to time and when I checked mine last night I found that the actual plug that plugs into the wall was getting quite hot. So I had to address this. We're going to change out the plug and inspect the damaged one and see the problem. This is my uh, EV charger and uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on this one because the plug is failing. Now this is a UL certified plug and uh, I don't know if you can see here but well, mm, yeah, uh, it doesn't look very good. It looks like it's seen better days. I was just, when my, my car was charging last night, and my, my car charges at night, and I charge it up when the electricity rates drop. So it comes on at 11 o'clock and takes a couple of hours to charge. And I just happened to be walking through the garage last night, and I, I do what, I do this once in a while. I don't know why. I run my hand down the electrical panel just to make sure, especially when things like the air conditioning and stuff is running. Um, I just run my hand down the electrical panel just to you know, make sure nothing's warm. I mean, stuff usually is warm, but not hot. And one of the things I do is I check the EV plugs that are plugged in. You know, just check them to see if they're hot and see if they're warm. And well, I touch this one and it's like, oh, that's, that's warm. No, no, that's, that's hot. That's, that's really hot. Like, like, that's unusually hot. Now, it's not the receptacle. The receptacle's new. And this is, it's not like this has been plugged and unplugged and plugged and unplugged. It's never unplugged. It's always plugged in. Uh, I, I, let it, I, I let it finish its charge and then I figured today I would take a look at it. When I unplugged it, I noticed that, well, this, well, it, it speaks for itself. Take a look, take a look here. It, it looks like um, it's been getting a bit warm. Now, this is a 20 amp plug. It's a, a Chinesium 20 amp plug. But you notice that it's kind of it's kind of cracking here, so I think this has got to go. This this has got to go. This is we're going to take this plug apart. I'm going to change this. It's just a regular cord. There's nothing special about this, and it is UL. It is certified, so it's not like it's a you know it's not like it's a knockoff. But it's drawing 16 amps, which is what this is. This charger is a 16 amp charger. So I'm going to replace it got a new plug. This one is an Eton, which is a, a good brand. You notice that this one is a 15 amp. You notice the difference in the, the pin arrangement. Now my outlet will do 15 or 20. It's, it's fused at 15 amps, so I could probably put this one on and we would be okay. This particular charger, it's on, but I have two EVs. This one charges at um, this one is charging at 3,700 watts, 3.7 kilowatts. My other EV that I have is older and it has a smaller charger in it. It's only charging at 3.3 uh, kilowatts, so it's a little bit less. So I don't know whether I should just put this 15 amp plug onto this cord and call it a day or whether I should, because uh, it's a little bit heavier, right? The size of the prongs. Oh, maybe they're the same. Whether I should bother to take the... I have a 20 amp like this uh, I'll plug on the other one. Whether I should change it and put the 15 amp because it can plug in as well to a 15 amp receptacle and put that the 20 amp one on this or whether I should just throw the 15 amp onto this cord even though I'm drawing a little more than 15 amps. Usually it... it it draws between 15 and a half and 16 amps. I'm probably okay because the breakers are 15 amps anyway and they never trip. So maybe I'll just put this one on here. There's also a, a 20 amp version of a 120 volt outlet and it's, they reverse these. So the hot side, which is this one, the blade is this way and the neutral, what, which on, two, on 120, this is the neutral side, right? 120 and uh, neutral and hot. And on the on the 120 volt version, the hot is facing this way and the neutral is facing that way. And on the 240 volt, they reverse it. So this is, you know, they're both hot, obviously on 240, but uh, they reverse the two of them so that you can't, you can't plug a 240 volt or cannot plug a 120 volt 20 amp plug into a 240 volt 
outlet because of the the orientation of the pins and then this one here is a 15 amp 240 so that you can't plug in a 120 volt appliance in to 240 because you know in North America I know the people in Europe will say oh we got a better power system in Europe we have 240 volts well we have it here too we have both we have 120 and we have 240 and we have different plugs for the different outlets this is a 15 amp 240 this is the 20 amp 240 and I'm just kind of trying to debate whether I should put the 20 on this one and put the 15 on the other and I might just do that just because this say this particular car draws a little bit more power than the other one but we're gonna open this dead one up and see what, what how bad it is we're gonna cut this open and see what how bad it is and change this out and make it work so first things first I should have brought my industrial wire clip clippers from work because this is a big cable it's gonna be hard to open this thing up I'm gonna need some pretty good sized snips okay let's uh, let's get cutting oh man that's heavy wire for these little these little nippers Well, there's the the old plug. Let's uh, let's get into this thing and see what uh, what shape it's in. We just have standard black, white, and green. Obviously, green is ground. But I want to see what I want to see what it looks like in here because it's all cracking. So I'm thinking that the welds on there are good. And when I put this on, I'll obviously torque them down super super tight. Now the reason I'm showing you guys this, and this is more will be more of interest to people that have EVs, is because well, when you're charging an EV, this is going to put a good load on your electrical system, and it's it's a good idea if you're if you've got equipment that plugs in to just check it, check it from time to time, just to make sure that something is not going bad because. Charging an electric vehicle puts a huge load on your electrical system in your house. And if anything is going to make things fail, it's going to be charging an EV. Now, I'm not saying that this was at the point where it was going to burst into flames, but the fact that this was hot to the point where it was soft, like, I mean, it was hot. I could barely keep my hand on there. I'm thinking that probably the crimp in here was starting to uh, become affected. And I just want to pull this through if I can, if we can pull this wire out and see. Hmm, it doesn't look bad, actually, you know. But if you look at the, the wire here, I'm going to pull this other one out as well. I'm not going to bother with the ground because the ground doesn't mean anything. But I do want to look at the two, the two conductors that handle power. What is that beeping for? That's my fan. I don't have the AC running in here today. I just have my fan going. And it, it's it's beeping at me angrily for some reason. Okay, let's get a let's get a close look at these crimps and see whether that's what where the heating problem was. I have a sneaking suspicion it's right here where the wires were crimped on. Oh, they just look, it look kind of a bit discolored here, right? Right at the crimp. This may be right here where our, where the heat was coming from. Anyway, to say better safe than sorry, a uh, $25 investment in a new plug is... Uh, a hell of a lot cheaper than a visit from the fire department at two o'clock in the morning because the EV plug has caught fire. And say so when you're when you're uh, dealing with this kind of current, it's um, you got to you got to basically stay on top of these things and monitor them because things can go bad over time, right? What, what's good today? I mean, this thing never used to get hot. That's why I was quite concerned when I when I first noticed that it was getting warm was because it never did get warm before. 
So when I put my hand on it last night and this was really quite like shockingly hot, I would say. When I I'm not gonna guesstimate as how hot it was, but it might have been 120 or 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Or maybe even a little hotter. It was not to the point where it's burning you, but it's an uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable hot where if you're holding your hand on it, you 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 can feel it. So I want to I want to get to the insulator and see if the, if it's starting to change color. Looks like it might be going a bit black here on the on the white wire. For those over in Europe that are used to 240 volts, let me explain how ours works. Our transformers on the pole they are still 240 volts on the secondary. But the secondary has a center tap, and that center tap is the neutral. Neutral is tied to ground. So we have three wires coming into the house. We have 240 volts across the two hots, and 120 volts between either hot and neutral, which as I referenced before, is tied to ground. It is grounded at the pole. It's also grounded at the service entrance in your house. Now it isn't ground, there will be some fluctuation, but it is tied to ground. I like a little discolored down here, where the white, where the insulation has been removed. It, I mean, there's obviously a strand didn't, a strand came out, so. I think this is where our fault was, is this crimp. It was just starting to uh, deteriorate. You can see some color changing right around here. Anyway, let's open up the cable and get the new end on there. So here are our new connectors. We're going to just strip the wire and put the wire in here and tighten these things down as tight as I can possibly get them. So we're going to need to open this cable up a little bit. Uh, put it through here first of all. Do that part first. We're going to strip back some cable. I'm doing it along where the ground wire is so that I don't nick anything else. Get my, get my good old snips out here and we'll, we'll strip this back a little bit. It's probably enough. gauge is good for 15 amps. Actually 12 gauge is probably good for 20 amps. But here's our 12 gauge. So we'll use our 12 gauge stripper to expose about maybe a quarter inch for all three. Polarity doesn't matter, it's AC. It's, if it was a uh, 120 volt line, then yes it would, because you'd have to have your neutral on your neutral side, but when you're running 240 volts, single phase, it uh, doesn't matter. So we're just going to crank these down. I will, I will cinch them down after I get all the wires in place. We want to make sure that these are torqued down as tight as we can. For the best connection, and then of course the same for the ground lug over here. Yeah, I got a couple of shiners on the ground. I'm not too worried about that. The ground is not really going to be passing any current unless there was a catastrophic failure somewhere. So we're going to put the clamp on here now and get this tightened down and get the plug nice and safe and then I can put it back in service and get my car charged up ready for work tomorrow.
I shut my compound down at work and now I have to commute to another compound and I'm driving around 53, 54 kilometers a day. That costs me, when I charge at night, about 70 cents for 53 kilometers. So it's about 31, 32 miles. There we go. Good as new. So if you got an EV plug that's getting warm, monitor that. Monitor your EV charging plugs. If they're getting warm, you might want to look into changing the plug or changing the receptacle because they should not get hot. Warm? Yes. I would expect it to be slightly warm because we are drawing a lot of power through here. But if it's hot to the point where it's uncomfortable to touch or the plastic is changing color or deforming or anything like that, then uh, it's time to look at replacing one or both pieces because the last thing you want to have is to say a visit from the fire department at 2 o'clock in the morning because your EV outlet overheated and charging an EV puts a big stress on your electrical system. So it's advisable to always have an electrician do the work for you. If you are not qualified or you don't feel comfortable or you don't know what you're doing, hire in a pro. It's just not worth the risk. I know what I'm doing and that's why I monitor this and that's why I changed this when I noticed it was getting abnormally hot. Thanks for watching.